Hey there, we are going to discuss critical chain project management. It is an approach that was originally developed by Eliahu Goldratt. And uh, critical chain thinking, it differs from critical path. And uh, the difference is, is in resources. Goldratt in critical chain project management uh, emphasizes resources as people. And resources are constraints, kind of a bottlenecks. And uh, when we are talking about bottlenecks, here comes the connection uh, to the theory of constraints that also uh, Eliyahu Goldratt did develop for production uh, environments. Okay, central concept, concepts in critical chain approach. First, constraints. Then, uh, finite resources. So, resources are really the constraints. Then, the fact that there are statistical fluctuations in activity performance times. Then, safety. We build safety in work activities by, for example, uh, using the 90% confidence levels of achieving uh, the uh, preset time for an activity. Then buffers. Buffers are kind of a contingencies and we create safety by uh, using buffers. Multitasking means that uh, we, for example, go to one activity or one project and uh, then back to the original project. So we go back and forth and when the resource does this, so it always takes excessive time to uh, make a kind of a preset uh, for the work of the other activity. Then I'm going to introduce the concepts of student syndrome and parking, Parkinson's law soon. And in the end, we are going to talk about single project uh, critical chain management and multiple project critical chain management. Okay, single project critical chain management. <coughs> uh, the variation uh, of time activity can be described uh, by a probability distribution, as we know. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so uh, it might be that uh, five days is the 50% confidence level. So there is 50-50 chance of going over or coming under five uh, days. And then uh, if we want to go to the 90% confidence level, it might be that we need to put uh, 10 days uh, for that activity. And in this way, we built safety uh, to the activity to uh, be on the safe side that uh, the preset time is not exceeded. Okay, uh, estimation variation. Uh, if we have three tasks, uh, then uh, interesting uh, question is that if those are scheduled with 90% confidence, why are most projects still develop, uh, delivered late and over budget and also changed scope or exceeded scope in a way? The answers can be the following. First, Parkinson's law and student syndrome. Parkinson's law. Work expands to fill the time it is allowed. So if we uh, provide 10 days for an activity, typically we use that 10 days. Uh, student syndrome is the following. If there is time, Let's waste it. And this means that if we, for example, have 10 days time to prepare for an exam and the student knows that uh, two days is enough, so maybe the student then starts reading to the exam only two days before the exam, even though uh, the activity is scheduled for 10 days, uh, starting 10 days before the exam. Other reasons can be the following. 
merging activity chains, queuing effect of multiple projects demanding the same resource. Later on, on I'm going to refer to the word drum and talking about drum resource, which is called Goldratz terminology. Then overconfidence as the variation of activity performance, multitasking, and then there is date-driven behavior. So polishing the apple and uh, sitting in an outbox until the due date. And the logic is the following. We are talking about late starts and interruptions and al allowing them. So if we focus on the date that the da task is due, then we can allow late starts if we have inbuilt safety. So the safety allows late starts, so it's okay. Also interruptions might be okay because we have inbuilt safety. Safety allows that we can let interruptions come in. If nothing goes wrong, then the project completes in time, but many times something uh, surprising happens in projects and if something goes wrong, task will be late. And if this happens on the critical path, then the whole project will be late. Okay. How do we use buffers for safety? So now there is a kind of a inbuilt safety in each of these three tasks. And the message is that do not use buffers for safety in the tasks, but take the buffers away or the inbuilt safety away, do the project in a short, shorter uh, time interval if possible, and then move the buffer for safety to protect the whole project's commitment. So move those buffers to the end of the whole project. So in the best case, you do the project in a very short time and you don't maybe need to use the buffers, but uh, if you need to use the buffers, then it's okay. You can always let some of these activities to delay or all of them uh, if necessary. This picture has the same message as the previous one. So now we can see that there are safety in the end of activities. And we uh, make uh, those uh, a project buffer or a feeding buffer from those uh, safeties that are now included in uh, the uh, end of the tasks. So in the following way. Remove the safety from the individual tasks in this way and put the safety where the project benefits. So there is earliest possible finish uh, quite early and then expected finish is uh, after all safety is used if needed. And this is the project buffer. And this one is the feeding buffer for other uh, paths than the critical path to kind of a protect also the critical path so that the other path don't become critical. Uh, so we have feeding buffers uh, there to protect the project from coming late because of that. Well, how to size project buffers? The book chapter by Leeds uh, talks about uh, project buffer sizing in a speci specific section and I suggest that you read the whole section. There is discussion about uh, uh, understanding uh, all kinds of reasons why uh, buffers are needed and uh, what uh, reasons that justify uh, the project buffer and its size and there are also some other approaches. But to give, give you one teaser is this uh, extract from uh, the section, the beginning of the section, where uh, Leach uh, says the following. Goldrat initially suggested that starting with activity estimates, cutting the individual estimates in half and adding back 
in a project buffer uh, equal to one half of the resulting critical chain would be one approach to size the buffers. So just take half away from uh, the activity times and uh, uh, make a really short schedule and then add uh, later on buffer in the end. Well, think about that and please uh, read the section if you like and then uh, let's talk about this for example in class. Now I want to say few words about multiple project critical chain management. This picture, again taken from Leach article, includes two parts. The upper part uh, is a description of three projects that are completed at the same time. In the lower part there are the same projects where the schedules are uh, shrinked uh, by uh, taking uh, uh, shorter times for the activities and adding buffers in the end of the projects. And the assumption is that if we take one project at a time or at least we don't uh, use resources in uh, uh, multiple projects at the same time, uh, then we can concentrate on the project and it comes uh, completed early, rather early. That's why all the three projects uh, become completed earlier than in the upper picture. But then also the important aspect is that if we think about these vertical uh, red lines uh, indicating uh, certain points of time, if we look at uh, the red line in the middle, uh, in the center of, the, uh, of those, so then uh, we can see that at that point of time uh, already two projects have been completed and only one project is still ongoing. Whereas in the upper picture all projects are in the middle of execution. Well, now you can see in the lower picture that uh, in the end of each project there is the activity which is uh, marked CCB. And CCB means capacity constraint buffer. And here I want to take up to you and introduce you the concept of DRUM. Uh, one of the resources shared across all projects controls the overall throughput of results. And uh, critical chain project management calls this uh, resource as the drum or drum resource with the image of a drummer of an ancient Galeon ship where the drummer sets the pace for the whole organization. Now the capacity constraint buffer uh, uh, kind of a place uh, uh, the buffer between uh, different projects, two different projects that use the same drum resource. And it indicates uh, when the certain activities in the next projects can be scheduled to start. So when uh, those activities that are shared by the projects are free for certain activities in the next project. So this is the kind of a logic. Actually the CCB uh, capacity constraint buffer doesn't actually appear in the project schedules but in this multi-tasking or multi-project uh, uh, critical chain management uh, it is an important issue to understand when these uh, resources uh, allow the next project to start. Hey, it was nice to talk with you about critical chain project management. Let's uh, continue by discussing these issues more uh, in the class and also in some other videos. Thanks. Uh, bye.